to leave because I don't like to put you to stay through these conversations. You don't make sense. You're welcome to. You're always welcome to. Don't you class? I do, but, but I'm not going. He's already in Seattle. Oh, he's in Seattle. Sometimes we'll stay. He's, he's, he's sleepless in Seattle. Yes. Yes, I saw him on Zoom yesterday. Jeremy, how are you doing today? Welcome oh, quick. How are you? Hi, good. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm very good. How are you guys? We're good. We're getting some. Um, a little bit of uh, echo, but I think it'll be fine. And um, James, you're recording off of yours, right? Yes. So you're in gallery view? Yeah. Yeah, can you share your screen just so we can see what we're recording while we're playing with it? Yeah. You got class or something? You're gonna hang out for Jeremy's conversation. I'll hang out for a little bit. Yeah, whatever. Um, so I had suggested to Jeremy this morning in a email message that I wrote using Siri, because um, I only have my phone and I can't type. Um, at eight o'clock, which is partly why I was late because of, I live an hour away. Obviously, if I'm sending email at eight, I'm not making it to class by nine. Um, and I suggested that we talk about templates and a few other things, most of which now have skipped my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you were talking about presentations. Yes. The so, and we chat. And poor Jared, I just have to read. You. He's really good because he takes easy. Can we chat today about 10 footing and also make it a bit of a tutorial for everyone? My students are interested in doing presentations. 10 footing. Did you, did you interpret that as templating? Um, I, uh, from the context, I figured some of this out. <laughs> I apologize. It does. Um, it's interesting that it reminded me of decoding elderly relatives' handwriting, yes. um, where you have the I, same kind. Um, sense of joy when you recognize something that seems coherent. Yeah, so I was wondering if you could do that for the presentation mode and if you could share your screen. Because I, and and yeah. using your, yeah. what Tiddly Wiki is presentation as a demo, because that's a great presentation that I don't think we've ever... Um, no, no. Well, okay, so um, I can kick straight into that because thanks to Steve's warning, I did a tiny bit of prep. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, you had an hour. <laughs> um, uh, perhaps the best way to start this thread, innovation that I hate PowerPoint, um, and of course I'm not alone in this nowadays, but um, I am the age where I've had 25 years of working in big corporates where the use of PowerPoint substitutes for thought, and it's a very frustrating thing. It's not so, corporate, by the way. It also pervades academia, as I suspect. <laughs> and the military. Apparently, in the military, they all give PowerPoint presentations to each other about you know, military matters. Have you guys um, probably been in classes that are PowerPoint heavy? Yeah. Yeah. Where somebody reads you their slides? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that it's a potentially benign technology, but it's turned out that it brings the absolute worst out of people, you know. Um, they're, um, uh, yes, anyway, I'll well, to... what, 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 I mean, you open the door there on, on the Tiddly Wiki presentation. What I like about Tiddly Wiki as a presentation tool is that you can make a presentation in a meeting or in a class and say, here's yeah. my wiki, and then they can follow everything. So the, the, the dream of presenting with Tiddlywiki is to be able to give audiences an experience that is sufficiently like PowerPoint that they are not disorientated, but to be able to extend that experience so that it's as unlike PowerPoint as possible. But kind of compatibility with PowerPoint is necessary. And the opportunity that I think is represented by using Tiddlywiki to do presentation is that it allows it, well, it allows some of the experience of reading TiddlyWiki to be transferred over to the presentation process. So almost everything we've said about nonlinear reading, we could also say about nonlinear conversations and with a nonlinear presentation to guide those conversations, you know, you've got um, quite an interesting variation on the traditional sort of lecture mode that people adopt when they're <coughs> presenting. But there's also, I think there's many aspects that are interesting. If, if I think of TiddlyWiki as, or a particular TiddlyWiki as being my outboard brain with all my thoughts about a thing, by integrating the ability to present those thoughts with the mechanism that I use to maintain and update those thoughts, then I'm ready for a presentation at any moment. So it's the equivalent of, you know, being, somebody walks over and you can press Command P and get a printout. 
Um, so you're in the same way that in software development, so as I design software under current, um, what's the word, the current sort of um, best practice is to make it so that at any given point, the code compiles and you can run it. And you make a series of small changes and you optimize that that process and it it's quite a powerful thing um, and it contrasts with an old world where you might have spent a day or two with the code sort of strewn over the floor and in a state where it doesn't work and similarly with presentations if you're maintaining your thoughts in a big fat word document and then you periodically transport them via copy and paste over to powerpoint in order to present them to other people then you're looking at a perpetually out-of-date presentation that's never going to be in sync with the latest version of your thoughts. Yeah. With that preamble, I will does screen that, share. Well, does that oh, make sorry. sense to you guys what, what Jeremy was just saying, though? Yeah. So, okay, so it's grid, bridging. It's like you're writing a presentation, but it's still live. It's like a dynamic PowerPoint. I don't know if you've ever had the experience where your Word document is out of sync with your PowerPoint. And so we're trying to sort of do it all in one place. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. So this, what I'm about to show you first, is not, in fact, the very first take at um, presenting within TiddlyWiki. Um, but it's quite an interesting starting point because it mirrors um, the material in the course. So what was going on here was that the thoughts that we have been exploring for some time, that TiddlyWiki can be explained as a series of gradually more complex concepts that then fit together in flexible ways to give us this the tool that we're familiar with. And so I wanted to present that in a YouTube video. And what I was visualizing was a kind of an animation. Um, and so at first, ironically, I explored doing it in Keynote, which is the Mac equivalent of PowerPoint. And the thing it is good at is animation, in fact. It's, a, it's um, Apple's first-class user interface for selecting graphical things and, and animating them. But I very quickly, as in in about two and a half minutes, got frustrated in the, no in the way that I normally do when I have to learn software that's not tiddlywicky, that it feels... Um, awkward that I'm not able to reuse what I already know, you know, leverage what I already know about TiddlyWiki. And so very quickly, I embarked on creating the presentation as, as a TiddlyWiki. So the idea was... experience yet of being frustrated using a piece of software that said, oh, I wish I was in TiddlyWiki, or is that just, you're not there yet? Well, here's us a little bit, honestly, <laughs> never, <laughs> not going to happen. And James is like, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> There's certain programs I use for okay. certain stuff, so. It will come. You just haven't seen the light yet. <laughs> so well, maybe or maybe not. I mean, the th for me, of course, the equation here is um, is also more sort of material because my investment in Wiki is you know, sure. many more. <laughs> hours of programming so there's more to leverage okay so um so what i did was created this tiddly wiki that, that i then recorded the screen while i operated it then did a voiceover and that's uh, the video that is now on youtube and it's like a two minute video and it's linked to on the front page of tiddlywiki.com and this is the underlying presentation so as with all the things i'm showing you there's a url uh, that you can copy and go to um, so uh, we're talking about TiddlyWiki. Um, we explain that TiddlyWiki is a note-taking tool. Um, this little illustration of the tiddlers within TiddlyWiki are actually live. They, those are <laughs> real tiddlers just tilted. Um, and then it says here, and it's slightly obscured, it's like a hypertext card index system from the future, which is one of my jokey ways of describing TiddlyWiki. Um, so that top bit is kind of um, selling what TiddlyWiki is, telling people what they're getting themselves into. And then we dive into the kind of um, uh, teaching part of it. So we uh, in TiddlyWiki, information is in bite-sized chunks that we call tiddlers. And here I'm using the zoom in view, you probably recognize, which has this characteristic that when I click on a link, it zooms into that link and it's intended to give the impression that we're sort of diving further and further into the material. So we explain what a tiddler is and then uh, in each case to get to the next slide, you click on the appropriate link and then you, know, you get that same has animation. Any, has anyone found that feature yet? That zoom in feature? 
Actually, I have. Okay, it's in there somewhere. I can, it's, it's, it's one of your settings. I'll show you in a second okay. um, how it's put them behind the scenes. Um, it integrates, so here is the um, famous Tiddly Wiki Cat, and I can draw over it. So um, that's illustrating the fact that images are a first class citizen in Tiddly Wiki, and it's done by repurposing the machinery that we use to edit bitmaps, you know, to put it here. Um, and we've got uh, an integrated MP3. And then we go into tags and you move to the next thing by <laughs> selecting the right item in the tag. Very brief explanation of transclusion, very brief explanation of lists, just showing the simplest thing, getting a list of things with a particular tag. Observation about plugins, so giving the example of the KTEX plugin of the translations, where now, of course, we've got many more, well, a few more than 21. Um, and then uh, a call to action to go to tiddlywiki.com to start using it. So let me refresh. Um, and um, I, you'll, the first way that we can see where we are is by expanding that, uh, the sidebar. And then you can see that it's a conventional tiddlywiki behind the scenes. The theme button, um, it's not very clear to see, but we've currently got a theme called Hide Furniture. If I change it to the conventional Snow White theme, then things start to look a little bit more um, familiar. Um, we are also on the zoom in story view. So this is the setting that we were just talking about, about diving into Tiddlers. If we go to the classic setting, then the Tiddlers follow each other one after the other, um, and we can switch back to uh, zoom in as well. Um, and then the a uh, minor detail here is this tiddler at the top, which is our opening tiddler, looks different than all of the others because it lacks a title. And um, you'll also notice that it lacks a toolbar, that there's not even an edit button there. Um, so we've heavily customized the, um, uh, you know, the, the UI, and we can fix that by going into the oops, sorry, toolbars, and uh, turning back on, let's say, edit and more. Um, yeah, those guys are already on. So now, oh, and perhaps we should turn on close as well, wherever that is. That. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to edit that mysterious tiddler that doesn't have a title. And typical programmer's trick, you can see that it's actually a single space. So it's the kind of thing occasionally people complain about that it's confusing that I can create a tiddler without an apparent title. Um, but in classic programmer style, it's sometimes quite um, useful to do so. So um, that's literally it. Um, the presentation that I showed you is made up of this um, hide, hide furniture theme um, and turning off a bunch of toolbar buttons. Um, that funky animation um, makes use of a story view that we call Cecily. Um, the Cecily story view is an experimental story view that lays Tiddlers out on a 3D, oh, sorry, on a two-dimensional canvas. So it's the beginnings of implementing something that we've discussed before. This is an old prototype from 2008 of this very simple idea of arranging Tiddlers as resizable panels on an infinite canvas. So um, forgive me doing going through a lot here. All I was showing you there was this magic incantation that makes that row of rocking tiddlers, if you see what I mean. Um, okay, so the presentation itself. I'm so sorry? I mean that that's that's like that's actually not part of this concept of presentation. No, no, that's um, uh, just me reusing TiddlyWiki to create an illustration within my presentation. So, I mean, you can imagine this working in other contexts because um, it's kind of a preview of what you're going to see, which I quite like. And we're told 
as speakers that we should do that that you know you prepare people by telling them what's going to happen you tell them what reaction you want them to have and all that and you know a good presenter can <laughs> can drive things that way so um so that's our first example of presentation tool and as you saw, it depends upon this hide furniture theme. Um, so all of the theme, okay. So we, so we've not explored in this class different themes. No, um, okay. uh, they. If we step through them, you'll get an, an idea, a taste for what themes do. Um, so if I switch to the centralized theme, um, you can see that my tools are now in a central, centralized column in the middle of the browser. Um, if I uh, select the tight theme, um, then you can see a lot of white space disappears. And if I go to classic view to make it a bit clearer, you can see. So these, these theme options, um, behind the scenes, they're style sheets. So these basically determine the layout and spacing um, of the page and typically the font as well. Um, so if I switch to the starlight theme, which is provided as a kind of demo, you can see it's got a custom font in it. And in fact, it's got a custom background and some custom CSS on the toolbar buttons to give them a gentle um, glow, that kind of thing. So one needs to, it's, it's a complicated area. There's three interlocking independent options that control the behavior of tiddlywiki there's sorry the appearance of tiddlywiki there's the theme which we've just been talking about there's the palette which is the um, set of colors that we use um, so oh well, actually these because of the theme i'm on hand let me go back to this no, wait. so, so we, we talked about um, theme and then palette gives us the different color sets that we use. So it's um, <clears throat> TiddlyWiki considers it to be useful that you can set those independently. So I can have any combination of you know, those colors with my tight theme, that works just fine. And then the story view, which is about the layout of Tiddlers within the story river. And we've talked about Cecily Classic and Zoom in there. So those are three independent ways that you customize TiddlyWiki. You choose your story view for how the tiddlers are arranged in the story river. Choose your theme, which gives you the basic appearance, you know, how things are laid out, how much space there is around a tiddler. And finally, the color palette, which just determines which colors are used for which elements. So themes must be Tiddler based and movable around just like any other macros or plugins, is that right? Themes are plugins. So um, if we go to the normal tiddlywiki.com and um, whiz into the control panel, um, you can see that the plugins are divided into three categories, um, one of which is, is themes. So these themes can be individually installed and uninstalled, and as you saw, we can switch between them but um palettes um and story views um they can be packaged as plugins that but you can have multiple ones in a single plugin so you could have one plugin that provides 25 different palettes for the you know different shades of the seasons of the year <clears throat> okay so um if that makes sense i'll move on now to um, some later work. So, well, thank uh, you very much for that, because that, that, because I've been, I think that'll really help. Oh, you wait till you see the next piece. Yeah, <laughs> because <okay. laughs> so you saw is, that the, yeah. the the motivation for doing that was a presentation done on screen to create a YouTube video. Um, mm -hmm. uh, later on, last year, towards the end of last year. I gave a presentation which was in a much more conventional manner where I was standing at a lectern mm -hmm. and there was a screen behind me. And so again, I wanted to be able to use TiddlyWiki and you can see that um, what I'm showing you here is um, just a development of what you've uh, already seen. So the first thing is there's some gubbins around the edge here. So we've got our basic slide now with a more attractive colored background. 
if I click that checkbox, you can see that underneath each slide, there's a bunch of notes. Um, but the way it's intended to be used is with this open a new window where we get the notes in a separate window. So mm -hmm. I had it set up with this window full screened, and I won't full screen it here, um, on the screen that was driving the projector. And then this was just dangling around on my laptop window. Um, and oh, again, yeah. we, we navigate by um, clicking on links. And so um, yeah, and you can see how when I clicked on the link to Jeremy Rustin, um, the notes page automatically changed at the same time. Um, and uh, as I leap through, you can see makes um, use of animated GIFs. That is me when I was 17 um, on the BBC. Really? Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, yes. No, if, if you're, um, uh, and this is the work I was doing at the time, animations for um, uh, BBC Children's TV, um, which are hilariously simplistic. Think again. <laughs> Okay. So th those were broadcast on um, national children's TV here in about 1982. So everything that you're showing us now in terms of the presentation is is just by having the right template, basically, and then everything else is handled inside. This is excellent. This is what I this is what I I'm going to use for my classes now. Well, yes. So the the problem is it's not really packaged um, for reuse at the moment, um, but for easy reuse. But um, you can um, I, the 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 parts are the same as we've already been talking right. about. So if I go to classic view, um, uh, the oh, well, oh, I better change theme as well. Change to the normal Snow White theme. Right. Okay. So there's your. That's the more familiar view, and um, I've just I've got this set up so that I do my editing in a text editor, and then I compile it, and then I check it in the browser. So my workflow is a bit, you know, which is a very software developer-y workflow. I imagine that um, most people would want to use it you know, entirely in the browser, creating their slides. Um, uh, yeah, I know you can change. We couldn't figure out how to change the color, background color of a tizzler, but we're going to work on it. So, it, it's I um, amazingly, <laughs> um, how that's done is not very. Um, turn, it, it turned out that what I wanted in terms of background colors was to have an attractive sequence of background colors as one went slide to slide. So, my first way of doing it was um, to make it so that there was a, um, a fixed background color associated with each tiddler. So one of the fields um, was background color. Uh -huh. But in fact, what I do now is not that at all. Instead, um, I just color them by their position. So look here, there's one at the top and an orange one afterwards. If I close the top one, then slowly the colors fade to back to half. Uh, and if I make the window very big like that, um, you can see, you'll see the same thing happening. There you go. So then the colors shift. So it's not, it's not going to be what everybody wants. But if you, um, what I liked about this arrangement was that it avoided me having to, as I rearrange slides, occasionally I would find that I'd accidentally put two slides together that had the same background color. And if you don't mean that, that's um, a confusing thing to do. So one of the things that needs to happen is these um, presentation tools need to be integrated and published as an addition uh, with instructions for people for how to create their own. And at the moment, you'd have to, I mean, it's not hard, but you'd have to dig around and see, you know, all of the extra bits and pieces that have been added. So you know, for instance, notes window, this is the template for that pop-up notes window. So that hasn't been packaged into a plugin at this stage. So therefore reusing it is a fairly sensitive matter of making sure you transport the right tiddlers across. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think what I'll be able to do though is kind of path through this and because this, this, this will be fun. 
in such and such. So, I mean, you, you, everybody spent, you know, seven weeks figuring out how to get where they are, and they're very different places than when they started. But now I think people are ready to say, okay, what do I do? <laughs> What's the point? Kind of yeah. You know, which is and, reasonable. And, and so now I think... Um, just picking up where we started the hang on let me stop screen sharing um oh how do i stop screen sharing uh, but for those would you recommend if we if, if someone wanted to pull on this a little bit start with the talkie talkie and figure it out from there yeah i mean what you really want um given that i haven't yet made that stuff reusable um is probably to persuade somebody out there who has already made a plugin to package that stuff up for plugin and that you know that would be the most useful um useful way to to, to proceed but um otherwise yeah just experiment yeah, yeah no, that's where we're all Drag, drag some tiddlers and of course in your case the introduction tiddly wiki you know that might well be the basis you might well be able to use the material that's in there as the basis for um uh, for a presentation, for your presentation. Okay. Yeah, no, that will that will help me a lot. So it's 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 all in the. Um... So I think one thing I'd like to point out that's quite only just occurred to me is you guys are at the leading edge of exploring spreadsheet interoperability with TiddlyWiki, really? um, and yeah, of course, you've evolved a nice workflow for doing that, and it's what it means. Uh, but let's just um, note so that you're doing spreadsheet stuff. I, in my day job, I'm doing a lot of work with documents where I take Word documents, I chop them up into tiddlers, and then I reassemble them. Ultimately, one of the ways that we output them is as a PDF. Um, and then today, we've been looking at publishing presentations from a tiddly wiki, so using... So isn't that interesting? That Those three things that we mentioned, so spreadsheets... Um, Word documents and um, presentations. They're the classic troika of the 1980s, 1990s office automation um, wars. Um, you know, we were, um, what we came out of from those wars was those three things. And so here we can see a representation of what I'd always hoped, really, that TiddlyWiki can play in all three of those areas and in a peculiar way, unite them. And it's interesting that Microsoft, faced with having those three temple products in the 90s, they tried to unite them. Um, but they united them by making it possible to cut a chunk out of a spreadsheet and put it in a Word document, and to cut a chunk of a Word document out and put it in a spreadsheet. So they, their idea of sort of can we make something more flexible by combining these three modalities of thought represented by spreadsheets, documents, and um, presentations? But what they actually did was gave you the means to kind of um, sellotape bits of each of those aspects onto each other so we could create a compound document that had spreadsheets and presentations and fragments of Word documents. They were live links, right? I mean, in, in, the, in Word, they were live links. So it was called um, Ole Linking and Embedding. And it was, it was pretty much the equivalent of an iframe today. It was the idea of a rectangular area of a document that was a view of something else that was stored somewhere else. And uh, my observation is that TiddlyWiki's um, much, TiddlyWiki's approach to merging the three things is at a much deeper level um, that the entities that comprise documents um, spreadsheets and um, presentations uh, become uh, items of data in TiddlyWiki's data model and they become interoperable in the process. So within TiddlyWiki's way of looking at things, you know, something that one minute is in a spreadsheet cell could be a slide in a presentation the next minute. They're the same things. They're not, we might not necessarily, we want, might want to treat some of them as being one thing or the other, but well, their interchangeability is what allows you to take this machinery to take an inco inchoate thought that you've partially recorded and bang, present it to your students, work on it live in front of them, you know, in a separate window. And when you press save changes, they see the change in the window they're seeing on the, on the big screen. But the spreadsheet integration is still an import. It's not, you don't really run a spreadsheet into the week. 
Well, no, what you can do is ex, uh, you, you're you very focused on importing, on taking yeah. a spreadsheet representation of a wiki and to, to trans, um, transforming it. We do also go the other way. So you can export an entire wiki as a spreadsheet and it's, uh, that's built into the core and it's in the same format that you've got. So it means, for instance, one could can, devise... Wow. So, sorry. You can reverse our flow? Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So that's what's a bit frustrating for me. The, the thing that you want to be able to do in terms of importing tiddlers from a spreadsheet is a perfectly reasonable thing, and I think it should be in the core, and um, particularly because the other way around is in the core. Okay, yeah, because the import CSV to JSON causes endless problems, and it's just a kludge. We all know that. Um, uh, yeah, but it's, quite, it's, um, it's a good demonstration of your daring do. <laughs> um, you know, there's a certain... I'm rather, um, actually, just picking up a thought right from the beginning when you were talking about before we started talking made me think about an open source concept called paving the cow paths. And it's this idea that, um, and it's classically the, the story is imagine a university quadrangle and they've um, just built this new quadrangle. Instead of deciding where the paths go, they grass the whole thing and then they wait to see where people walk and that's where they build paths. And we do that all the time in open source. So there's lots of potential pathways through TiddlyWiki to experience it. And we try to pave the commonest pathways. And one of the interesting things about the dialogue that you suggested, so you suggested to your students, go to the discussion groups, go to the mailing list to ask questions, you'll get an answer quickly. And so there's a clear value your students are getting something back in return for i mean you know, getting something for free they're getting some advice some help um but the interesting thing is the other side of the equation is that it's by those questions that people like me in the center of the project can see where the foot traffic is and so can evolve plans for what we need to make easier which bits of the tiddly wiki journey we can pave better so that the pathways are easier to negotiate and that's happened repeatedly in Tiddly Wiki's history that people have, uh, it's taken people who have taken the trouble to articulate a need before yes. we've actually been able to cater elegantly for that need. As you've discussed, often um, there's a theoretical capability to respond to every need, but you know, it's not within everybody's capabilities to do the kind of hacking of Tiddly Wiki. So what that says to you, Paul, and to you, James, and to other users is that you're, it highlights your role as a user in an open source community. So you can, yeah, and that it's a two-way equation. That you, think, you rarely hear that articulated to the users that, hey, you are actually shaping what the, I mean, you oh, figure, well, you see it. Let me, um, let, let me, if I may, expand on that a little. It's something I found very interesting. I... I had no prior experience of open source before I started DiddlyWiki. So everything that happened, you know, was a, was a new discovery for me and fascinating to think about because open source so clearly overturns um, the environment in which software was created when I was growing up, for instance, which was the package software environment of the 80s where, you know, you literally shipped software in a box with, um, uh, with plastic around the outside. And here's one of the very interesting things about open source communities for which I am profoundly grateful. And if it was a shop, an open source community is a shop where your happy customers, you simply don't see literally no burden. So if a thousand people show up at tiddlywiki.com, find everything they need to know in order to start using tiddlywiki and get on and use it, um, uh, then I don't get to hear from them. Um, not only do, are they not a burden upon me in that you know I don't have to serve them like I would if it was a shop, they're literally not a burden on my resources. They don't cost me any el electricity or any server space or, um, um, sorry. <laughs> um, they don't, uh, they, whereas the unhappy customers of course, are the ones that post messages and say, how do you do this? Or why doesn't this work? And you st to start with, you might think, well, what a nuisance. It means that the only people you hear from are the people who have something to whinge about. 
But in fact, of course, it's magical. And it's exactly what a big shop like the Apple Store would want. Imagine standing at the top of the staircase of the Apple Store, looking out onto the crowded shop floor, being able to flick your finger and then make all the happy customers disappear so that all you can see are the disgruntled, unhappy customers. And wouldn't that be amazing? Apple would then presumably swoop on them and <laughs> cover them in largesse until they became happy customers. Um, but that's really interesting. It means that in an open source community, you know, one is very focused. It's very easy to focus on the unmet needs um, that people are expressing. And then, of course, you realize that what makes software like TiddlyWiki useful um, to uh, m mostly what makes it useful to other people is actually the r endless iterative result of that feedback. You know, if, if TiddlyWiki was just for me, I mean, I can't quite imagine sitting on my own for five years and writing it and not showing it to anybody. But if it was, um, it would be markedly different and it would only... Um, you know, its focus would be on meeting my own needs. And so I think in every sense, the reason why it is <clears throat> what it is today um, is a direct product of this ongoing conversation with users, some of whom have needs that conflict with my own um, instincts or best wishes. And I've had to learn, I'm oh, sorry, best instincts. And I've learned, had to learn how to accommodate all these kinds of differences of opinion within this you know, big project. So it's a, it's a privilege to see this process at work. You know, we are, um, there's so much on the news um, that we see about um, things that people do in groups, you know, things that humans do to each other. And yet here is this wonderful example of an environment in which the things that humans do to each other are very ritualized in the form of, you know, in software development. But are astonishingly productive. And you know, as many people have observed, it's, it's impossible not, when you participate in an open source project with people all around the world, I mean, I get submissions to the code of TiddlyWiki, particularly from people in the Far East, whose command of English is not sufficient for me to reliably understand what they mean in their messages. And yet, um, I can understand their code. And I've merged their code into TiddlyWiki. So Tiddly, you know, forgive me, I think I may have emphasized this before, but, but TiddlyWiki is a product of, of many different brains. And many of those brains are as unlike mine as I could imagine. And you know, finding a mechanism in open source by which uh, all of these divergent perspectives can be accommodated and we can all get what we want feels like a, you know, a metaphor that should be shouted much, much wider and louder than it is at the moment. So um, when we go back and tag this conversation, James, <laughs> we'll talk about that first half in terms of presentations. That second half, I think, is a really interesting discussion on open source. And then for our third half, um, which we'll spend, we have about eight minutes left or so. I was wondering, Jeremy, if you might share with us a little bit of your backflow, your workflow in TiddlyWiki as a writer so what, or as a developer. So how do you use tags to flag tasks that you might need to get to in the past? And, and maybe you don't do this at all. But I, I've opened up a discussion I think I've tried to in class about the difference for TiddlyWiki as a writer where you're managing your own work as opposed to a designer where you're imagining readers looking at your work. And so Very interesting, yeah. You use okay. Tools? Yeah. So we've talked a lot about how I and we all use TiddlyWiki, and there's a lot of focus on the commonality. And I think the question here is, is a personal question in the sense that it's about how I use TiddlyWiki in a way that might be distinct from everybody else. So we all press the new Tiddler button, um, but, uh, but there's a bunch of other things that we don't necessarily all have in it's common. It's not necessarily distinctive, but how does, how does the, the... When you're writing something in TiddlyWiki, when you're using TiddlyWiki, and you're, you, whatever it is that you're doing, you have a set of tools available to you. Some of those tools are going to be visible to your audience when you're quote unquote yeah. done. And some of them will just be sort of temporary or that it, it's the way that you go about thinking and working. And, and that's what I'm trying. And I, I've had a very difficult time creating an exercise that attempts to 
Okay. Well, I mean, my, my preamble was because when I was thinking about this, I realized that for me, the most important, what feels like the most important part of the writing process is the part of the writing process that I have um, kind of the most difficulty with, actually. And it's, it's the simplest first part of the process. It's recording a thought in the manner that is most expedient and being confident that you've got it for the future. So I think my problem with writing was ideas getting away from me. You know, it was right at the beginning of the writing process. Um, and so the thing that I realize now that I value most about TiddlyWiki is being able to press the new Tiddler button, um, type a stream of consciousness and press control enter and close my mind or, you know, switch my mind to something else. So that kind of, um, and I, I think that that's, the psychology is pretty obvious as well, but it's, um, it's this feeling that um, things, thoughts, ideas are almost like a burden until you've unloaded that idea onto the external scaffolding so that it has a concrete independent existence. So when you do that, when you press new to the type of stream of consciousness thought, control enter, which I don't know if anybody else knows, but that's the same thing as clicking on the checkbox to say to the I believe, because I clicked the checkbox, which is weird, I'm kind of keyboard centric, but whatever. Do you tag that idea? You use the um, function? So I, I, I went back and checked, and so yeah. my, my main um, personal wiki um, uh, it dates from, let me just double check, um, I think it's about two years old, this one. Um, let me just check. Yeah. Oh, in fact, it's less than that. This, is, this one is uh, a year and a half old. So background there is that I tend to cut and burn. I've talked to other people who do the same thing. When a tiddlywiki gets to a certain size, um, the most comfortable thing to do is to move to a new blank tiddlywiki and to transfer very little stuff across so that you have a kind of explicit mental threshold. Oh, that was beginning before the end of 2015. It's going to be in that file over there. And I find that mirrors probably the way that I inhabit houses and rooms as well, actually. But, you know, um, so this wiki right now has, um, uh, oops, has 262 tiddlers and a small prize for guessing how many tags it has. So... It has three tags. Three tags. Okay, so you use it as just a, and that's a really that's a very interesting use of the wiki, almost nakedly. <laughs> yes. So I tend to um, the way that I think about this, the wiki, the personal notes wiki that I'm talking about, is as a reverse chronologically ordered stack of cards, mm -hmm. and I tend to I think of it as the drafting place for things that'll end up elsewhere. So many of the kind of important GitHub tickets that were going to take time for me to draft, I drafted in TiddlyWiki. And for things like that, I draft them in as markdown tiddlers so I can copy them straight across. Well, so in, in, in my workflow, something that I'm quite interested in is um, ec, uh, di what's the word? Um, dynamic export options so that I can, for instance, click on a tiddler and say, make this into a GitHub ticket in this repo. Mm -hmm. um, and where it would just sort of or tweet this tiddler, where it would set up, um, open a new tab with twitter.com in it with that tweet, re with that tiddler ready to go. Um, maybe making a bitmap of the tiddler text if it was too big to fit in a tweet. That kind of. yeah, um, that's an interesting so, so, my this tiddly wiki is very unstructured. Uh, and it's, it's explicitly the place where I do my unstructured thinking. So there's a lot of reliance on full text search. Um, and there's a lot of refactoring where what I will do is to preserve the reverse chronological thing is I'll create a new tiddler that at the bottom links to the old tiddlers and consolidates their 
content. Um, so and you just sort of do the drag and drop linking thing. Exactly that. Exactly that. So it's it's very simplistic, but it feels to me like it's it's rather consistent with TiddlyWiki that that you could imagine an incredibly simple Visual Basic application that did everything that I've described. You know the an applica- a piece of software that just did what Jeremy is doing with this wiki, a reverse chronological stack of cards that I can search. I mean, literally, I could lash that together in Visual Basic in 50 to 100 lines. And it would be, in many respects, functionally equivalent to the important parts of, of what I've got. And so again, it goes back to... Um, a, I've got many other needs in different contexts. You know, we've just been talking about the presentation. So that, that Visual Basic app wouldn't be sufficient for me. Um, but it sort of shows how TiddlyWiki is ma- you know, this malleability, this ability to turn it into the tool that you want um, and for that customization to go as deep as your nerve allows you. <laughs> well... Let me, let me try to wrap this part, our third half here, um, because I think what Jeremy's just kind of shared with us is a sense that we can take um, to the wiki as a platform for writing a wiki, but it takes us all, way back to the first reading you had in this class, which I was probably Vannevar Bush, um, but he was imagining the Memex, which was in a sense a tool for gathering all of your thoughts across many different domains. And um, all of you in the class, most of you in the class, everybody's of different ages, but all of us have, have either latched on to computing and digital technology later in our lives or early in our lives or somehow it's always been there in our life. But there's, it amazes me that there's still relatively few tools that allow you to capture and move information through all the different phases of your life. One of the, or your day, not your life, your day. One of the dreams, I think, of, of Bush, to a certain extent, and certainly Nelson, was this grand operating system of your world. And in some respects, I mean, I latched on to Tiddly Wiki for all sorts of different reasons, but in some respects, I think, as Jeremy was just suggesting, that there's this, it's an unusual piece of software that allows you to potentially keep things in the same platform, and then just move them all over the rest. Most, oh, there's Russia again calling, that's actually on campus, 192, 159. Um, I don't know if you're seeing that, Jeremy, but that's a weird thing. <laughs> no, I heard that, but I couldn't see it. Our security guy, one of our security guys came by and says we're being pinged by Russia, by somebody from a Russia, Russian server now is trying to break into our systems, and we're seeing wow. it in live time, so. I don't know if that's what he said, but anyways, but, but uh, yeah, but I, I just want you to, to think about that. And one of the things that I like about hypertext and designing and writing interactive text is that it opens up that possibility. One of the things that Tiddly Wiki is interesting in, is for us is that it kind of pushes back and says, by the way, you can use this as your just your everyday notebook. I mean, that's not about an interactive text at all, and it's not really what we're doing in the class. But the reason I wanted to have Jeremy walk through that was. So here's the guy who basically wrote the book, right? Designed a piece of software. So Jeremy, what do you do on a day-to-day basis when you've got an idea and you're going to record it in Wiki? And I just make a bunch of tiddlers. They don't have links. They don't have templates. They don't have transclusions. They don't have any of the stuff that we spent weeks and weeks talking about. But they're just there. And ultimately, he says, they're going to find their way into the code that you use because that's his day job. You know, but another, um, in one of my day jobs, um, I, I have a tiddly wiki that I use for meetings. So that, uh, that's a much closer to some things we've been talking about. I put some effort into some templates and so on for handling agendas and sure. action and so on. And, yeah. you know, I do that kind of office stuff too. <laughs> but, but, for this, right. but for this week's exercise, where one of the tasks was to think about and try to document your process of using Tiddly Wiki in that writing to think model, as opposed to writing to design or designing something, writing to think, I'm just like, like how would you do it? And, and that was, that's interesting that, that you don't do it in a sense. Um, but we'll see where people, and I, I just think it's fascinating. Do you write in camel case in these notes, Tiddlers, or do you bracket future Tiddlers that you're gonna write soon? 
Um, I sometimes do. So um, I can think of a couple of examples where what I've been working on in this notes wiki is a small group of interlinked tiddlers mm -hmm. that I then am going to move somewhere else. Um, but generally, I mean, in a, you see, I think I do use links, but the links that I use are the links that are automatically generated in the recent tab yes. and in terms of search. So, you know, we think of links as these manually written links, but a very important type of link within TiddlyWiki is the, you know, the automatically generated links that we use to we navigate. List filter equals recent, list filter equals missing or whatever it is. Basically. Yeah, all, all, all that kind of stuff. So those, you know, those, although those aren't intrinsic links within Tiddlers, they're extrinsic links. Or something. I'm not sure that that is a helpful distinction, but they, um, but, but you know, they provide a, a an orthogonal version of the same navigational capabilities as the explicitly authored links that we might put yeah. in more densely hyperlinked world. Well, but you see, what, one of the things about the text that I'm talking about is, it's most of the wikis that I make are single topic wikis they're about a particular thing and sometimes just about a particular moment a particular meeting I'll start a new wiki put it up on the screen you know we'll change things with with colleagues as we as we work through it um, so there's a singleness of purpose of most wikis which lends itself quite well to the customization capabilities but the wiki that I'm talking about this notes wiki um, the odd thing about it really is that it's utterly heterogeneous so it's got draft blog posts, draft bits of TiddlyWiki, all those different worlds all sort of pulled together. And that, of course, leads to interesting serendipity and you, know, you, can, you can really understand why I like to keep those worlds together. Yeah, so so to, to close on the thought, I think that Jeremy left us with, perhaps intentionally, perhaps not, is one of the things that I think, I, I'm getting to that point now with TiddlyWiki, but my sense is that most of the people in the design right community have not really gotten there is that we don't like care. You just make new ones whenever you want. You know, like how many? If you, if I thought about how many Word documents I've created in my lifetime, and, and how the the idea of creating a new Google Doc is a nothing, it's just like new doc. Well, new wiki, same thing. Download empty, boom, and go. And so getting, and probably most of us are approaching, or most of you guys are approaching, Tiddly Wiki is still this thing that you have that's out there that you go to and work on. And if you get to the point where it's just like a Google Doc, you just open it up and use it. Oh, make another one. You know, share it with somebody. Then, then you're then then you're in a different place. Um, and I think that that might be an interesting extension of the design right work to say, well, start start having lots and lots of weeks. <laughs> you know, just make a new one, throw it away, make a new one, throw it away. You don't throw it away because it's there. And, and it's and it's hmm. annoying as having all those Google Docs in your drive that you can't find anything. <laughs> but no, it's quite. Um, th there's a metaphor there somewhere about how useless and annoying it would be to have a single piece of paper and no access to the paper store. Yeah. Um, and Tiliwiki is a paper store. It's not just a sheet of paper. Right. I must definitely go because I'm. Yes, well, thank you. you. That was excellent. But thank you very much, everybody. Um, so, are we on next week as yes, usual? Sir. Brilliant. I'll try. I'll look forward to more than an hour ahead of time. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Many thanks, guys. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Um, so let's stop.